In today's lesson, we have two verses. And Natalie, what's what's the first verse? Deuteronomy verse 15, 1 through 2. Okay, go ahead and read that for me, please. At the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. This is how it is to be done. Every creditor shall cancel any loan they have made to to a fellow Israelite. They shall not require payment from anyone among their own people, because the Lord's time for canceling debts has been proclaimed. Okay, and the second one? Um, no. Go ahead, take your time. Colossians verse 3, 13 through 15. Okay, go ahead and read that for me, please. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against me, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ ru rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace and be thankful. Okay. Out of those two verses, what do what do the verses mean to you? Or what is... What stands out in those verses? To forgive. To forgive. And to be kind. To be kind. So today we're going to talk about kindness. Kindness is the fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember the fruit of the Spirit? Yes. Yes? So um, we have, do you remember some of the, some of them? Um, Self-control, kindness, caring. Okay. It's, it's love, joy. Peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Control. Kindness is pretty much being nice to people, but it's more than that. It's being nice to everyone, even if they can't pay you back. What do you think that means, Natalie? To everyone, even if they're not kind to you. That's a really, really good example. So I'm going to give you my example. When I was in school, I would always, I love stationary items. I have, you know, even when I was in school till now, I, I collect a lot of pens, a lot of gel pens, a lot of stationary stuff. It's my thing. But when I was in school, I would always take extra spirals, a, a spiral too. I would have, you know, pencils, pens. I had extra paper in my binder. So I, I always had enough supplies. But there was always this one girl that she used to sit in my, I believe it was my history class. And we would take a lot of notes and she would never have any supplies with her. And she would sit next to me, uh, especially on the days where we would, you know, take notes. And she would always ask me if I could give her some paper. And I was always willing to share my things. Um, I think it would, you know, I sat next to her every, <clears throat> every day throughout uh, high school, my freshman uh, year, and she would always sit next to me to get supplies. So to me, I think one of my other friends uh, mentioned it, and she was like, why are you always giving her supplies? Why are you always giving her supplies? She should bring her own supplies. Um, and we would, you know, we would talk, and we became, I guess you can say we became history buddies because, they, I mean, that's the only time that we would actually talk and you know laugh and stuff like that so she was my sometimes history friend um but regardless you know I would share things with her because I knew that she didn't have any I didn't ask any questions but you know I was willing to get things I would even tell her just go into my backpack you know if I if I would leave to go somewhere and get what you need um but you know I didn't expect anything in return I was just you know, that was just, that's part of who I've always been, you know. If some if I see somebody needs something, then I just kind of just offer it to them or give it to them. But do you think that that makes her a bad friend? No. no? I don't think so either. And, I, and you know, even my, my other friends would be like, well, I wouldn't be like that if she's only my friend sometimes and she would only look for me, you know, during class and not, not outside of class. But... You know, everybody's different and everybody has their own opinions, but that was, you know, that was my, my way, you know, of being, I wanted to be nice and I wanted to share my things. I've always, you know, it, it's good to be nice and it's good to, um, be kind to others.
I know that you mentioned that you also have uh, something similar that happens to you at school. So uh, go ahead and share that with us, please. Uh, during the week, somebody comes to me during lunch um, whenever I bring snacks like gushies, and they ask for some. And they ask for some? Um, does that person bring food or do they eat the lunch? Um, do they eat lunch or do yeah, you, they, eat the cafeteria food. They, they sometimes eat the cafeteria food? Yeah. So I think that that's really nice. And I think that's really kind of you to share your food. Did you ever questioned, uh, you know, why that person would only sit, sit with you on certain days or throughout the week? Like my friends did, did you, did that happen to you at all? No? Or none of your friends question you either? No. No? So what did you think about that when she would just come to sit with you on certain days? I didn't mind sharing with her because I didn't know if her parents didn't buy her anything or didn't have enough money to buy her snacks. Okay. So you just didn't question it. You just willingly wanted to share your snacks. And I think that that's very kind of you. So God wants us to be nice to everyone, even if they can't pay us back. And if we love God, then we'll love everyone too, because God does, because God does that. God, God wants that for us. That's what we're supposed to do: show kindness to everyone. Don't you think? I think so too. Not because we want something from them, but because God loves them, and we should, we should too. You know, sometimes it can be really, really hard to be nice to people who aren't nice to you in return. Have, has that happened to you, where you're just like? Oh, Either it's, you know, a mean person at school, uh, you know, a bully or a teacher that you just don't, sometimes you don't like. It doesn't have to be a teacher. It can be friends. It can be other people, just people, in, you know, in general. But sometimes it's really, really hard. But if you have the Holy Spirit living inside you and you are living according to the Spirit, then you will be kind. Even to those, pe even to those people who call themselves your enemy. So I decided that I'm still going to be kind and I'm still going to be nice even if people can't pay me back. Even if other people say, oh, uh, evil, even if people say like how they did when I was in school. Oh, well, she's only your sometimes friend or I'm not going to be her friend or I'm not going to be his friend because they're only my sometimes friend. No matter what anybody else says or no matter what anybody else thinks, I'm still going to be nice and I'm still going to be kind. What about you, Natalie? Good. And even if those people can't pay us back, can't um, give us anything in return, we still have to be kind. So my challenge to you and to everyone is this. I want you to think about all the different type of types of people that you see in your daily life. So you know how many people you see in, in your daily life, right? Mm -hmm. As you go to school and, and, and you run into a lot of different types of people. You know, whether you see people, like I said, at school, at home, at church, or when you go out doing errands with your mom, wherever and where, wherever you meet these people, I want you to think about each individual person. Individual person. It might be kind of hard because there's a lot, a lot of people, but sit down and really think and ask yourself if you are being kind to them. And if the answer is no, we definitely need to work on that kind to everyone and if the answer is yes you are being kind I want you to ask your I want you to ask yourself another question why why are you being kind why are you being kind to them because if the answer is I'm nice to them because they're nice to me or you can say I'm nice to them because my mom says I have to then I think it's time that you need to check I think it's time to check your heart Check and see if you are spending enough time with God and if you're living the way God wants you to. Natalie, why are you kind to others? Because I don't know what they're going through and I like to make people happy. That's super nice of you. That's just That just shows that you are a beautiful person inside and out and you have a big heart. You want to be able to tell you are living according to the spirit of of God. See if you are kind to people and if you and if you're not or you are being kind to people just to get something out of them, then you need to spend more time with God. Don't you think? I think so too. I think 
you know, sometimes people are just nice to people to get certain things. And I don't think that that's something that God wants us to do. I think God wants us to be kind and to love people unconditionally. Do you know what unconditionally means? Forever? Yeah, it, it could. Yeah, forever. But it, me, unconditionally means no matter what. No matter if you make mistakes or what type of mistakes you make. Um, let me put it like this. Do you think if we make a mistake, do you think God's going to love us? He's going to look, we make a lot of mistakes as, as we grow up, you know, when we're small, we're going to make a lot of mistakes, but the one person that's going to love us unconditionally is God. So unconditional, that's what unconditionally means, no matter what. So I know that it can be extremely difficult, but the Holy Spirit is living inside of you. It's living inside of us. God loves, God lives lives in you and you are God's temple and God can help you to be kind. So let's all work really hard to be kind to one another if even if they can't pay us back. So I know you you made your your list, Natalie. Can you tell me a little bit about your list? I made three different lists. Three different lists. Can you tell me about them? One's for school, friends and home. One's for school, friends and at home. That's good. So what are you going to try to uh, do each and every day. Be kind and help. People. Be kind and help people, and help people, because that's what God would have wanted us to do, right? And on that note, we're gonna go ahead and end today's lesson with our prayer, uh, to which I know you wrote, you've uh, written for us. Can you? So, what do we do when we pray? We put our hands together. You put your hands together. Go ahead. Hold my hand, God. Lead the way. Help me good every day. Let me know what's wrong and right. Keep me safe all through the night. Let me know what you have planned. Lead the way God hold my hand. Thank you, Natalie.
morning, church. It is good to be with you this morning in the rain, in the chill. It actually feels like winter. I'm sure it'll be over by tomorrow or later today. Um, But it was so lovely yesterday. Well, it wasn't like lovely weather, but it was cold and rainy and gray, and I did not get out of my pajamas, and it was fabulous. So if we could have days like that, where the weather is bad just on pajama day, that would be awesome. We could take more of that. I hope you all found different places and times to rest and to just be and enjoy um, God's delight in you. As we come to worship this morning, I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Michelle Vernon. I get to be the pastor here. It's my joy and my privilege. And as we come into this season, into the spring, we are talking about Jubilee, what it means to celebrate and rest, to focus on family and loved ones, the forgiving of debts, the forgiveness of the relationships in our lives, and how that transforms us. And so I pray this morning that you experience God's delight in you and those places that we kind of hold separate, that you would invite the Lord in to lift and set you free. And we have just a couple of announcements. First, you'll see on your seats are these little slips of paper. Um, These are very important. What we'll invite you to do is to take a moment, either now or throughout the service, whenever it comes to you, to write down how God has blessed you this week. And when we call for the offering, I would ask that you come and bring those and place them in the offering as well. They serve a multitude of purpose. One is that it begins to Um, remind us and it becomes habit for us to look and examine our week and see where God was present, to see how God has been faithful, to see that God is alive and active in our lives in the world, that God's presence is real. It gives us an opportunity to give thanks to God, to remember that in those places where we sometimes think, well, that was a happy coincidence, or I got so lucky. No, that was the Lord providing for you, and we need to celebrate that and recognize that God is doing a good thing in us, in our community, in our world. And so we bring those forth as a sacrifice of praise, part of our offering. Very important. Um, I think... To be honest, that is probably our only announcement this morning. Watch, somebody's going to stand up and go, no. Uh, But I think that is it. So if you are joining us online, I welcome you, and I ask that you would start in the comment thread to pass the peace, blessing one another in the name of Jesus Christ, one to another. If you are here in person, I invite you to take out your smartphone, check in on the thread on our Facebook page, begin greeting our online community. We're working at ways to connect our online and in-person community and be one community together. And once you have done that, I'll invite you to turn and wave, make eye contact, your best parade wave, greet one another. If I hear a, hey, I'm so glad to see you, that'd be awesome too. Um, And with that, we will begin our time of worship. morning, everyone. Please stand as you're able for the call to worship. I will read the leader's portion and you all will respond with the people's portion printed in bold. Let us remember what our God has done. God created the world out of a formless void. Let us remember what our God has done. God made every animal and plant bird and fish. Let us remember what God has done. God God created created people in the image of God. Let Let us remember remember what our God God has has done. done. Please remain standing for our opening hymn.
sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His own. for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship you. near and the time has come still my soul will sing your praise on any ten thousand years and then forever more bless the Lord oh my soul oh my soul worship his soul. join me in our profession of faith where the spirit of the Lord is there's the one true church apostolic and universal whose holy faith let us now declare we believe, we believe in, in God, in God the, the Father, Father infinite, infinite in wisdom, wisdom power and love whose mercy is over all his works and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen. Sprawl. 
Father, God, we come into your presence, and we come to the altar. We come and we bring what we have. We come and bring our brokenness. We come and bring our joy, our doubt, our insecurity. Come. Hands open, heart ready, knowing and believing that you love us, knowing and believing that we encounter you face to face, that we meet you in this place. You are not just a good idea. You are not a moral checklist. You are not the way we decide if we're good people. You are real. You are a person. You are a relationship. in those quiet places, help us to hear you, to believe that you're speaking, to know that you are moving, that you are with us. You are making us whole, and you are making us holy. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Our scriptures this morning come from the book of Deuteronomy and the book of Colossians. Listen now for the word of the Lord. First, from Deuteronomy 15, starting at 1, verse 1 and 2. At the end of every seventh year, you must cancel the debts of everyone who owes you money. This is how it must be done. Everyone must cancel the loans that they have made to their fellow Israelites. They must not demand payment from their neighbors or relatives for the Lord's time of release has arrived. And then from Colossians chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. These are the words of God for the people of God. So I want to ask um, how many of you every seven years, just go ahead and forgive everyone who owes you money. <laughs> how many of you have called your mortgage company and your bank loan and whoever else and said, hey, it's year seven. Thanks for playing. I'm good. There are contexts for these specific scriptures. And the thing about money is not necessarily about general commerce. It's about individuals. It's about how we have related with one another, how we have borrowed from one another, how people got into circumstances. If people sinned against each other, restitution was made financially. And so if you did not have the financial means to make restitution, you would have to sell your property or sell your livestock or sell your slaves or do various things. So when we talk about forgiving these debts, there's a certain sort of context. So keep that in mind. But when we look at the Colossians passage, I think that meets us in a different place about forgiving debts that people owe us, not just woundedness. So I, I frequently confess to you that I am an overthinker, that I need, and, and it is part of my just being, that a lot of times I need the why in various circumstances. I always know the who, the who is always the Lord, the who is always Jesus, and I can get there and when the why is too much trouble or too much pain, I often let that go <laughs> and just focus on the who. But the why of Jubilee, when we start thinking about forgiving debts and returning property and releasing people and setting prisoners free, setting slaves free, releasing households, all of these things, I need to ask why. Why does it come after a year of rest? Because it would have been every seven years. So the 49th year, you would have forgiven debts, which means you have none of your extra money. And then the next year is Jubilee. 
and you can't sow, and you can't reap, and you can't harvest, and you can't, and so all your little extra (laughs) is gone. And you have to depend on the Lord, what the Lord provides. Okay? That's, for me, that isn't enough of a why. I mean, I get it, but we are always learning. We are always growing in discipleship about how to lean into the Lord, how to be totally dependent. So what is this jubilee thing about? Why? Why? Why do we need it? What is it about? And as I sort of press into different scriptures, as I look for God's heart, I remember a few things, like just out of this Old Testament Hebraic identity. Let's start there. That the end purpose of all things with the Lord, the end, the very the very end, when we live in fullness in the kingdom, is the tikkun olam, the healing of all things. And when all things are healed, we have God's shalom, God's peace. But before we get to the tikkun olam, the only way you achieve the healing of all things is the tikkun alev, the healing of the heart. Until the hearts of God's people are healed, We will never see all things healed because we are part of the process. We partner with God to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth. So these jubilee years, we have these seven-year Sabbaths, these seven-year rests, and then you have jubilee, a time where we are reminded and we are commanded to forgive, to set people free, to make right to let go of old things for the sake of others being whole. Part of what we'll talk about on another Sunday, this idea of returning to the ancestral homelands and why it's an important piece of jubilee that ancestral homelands are returned, like if they've been sold to you or to a different Israelite, why it would be important to return those. And it's because your family is buried there. It is not just property It's memory. It's history. It is your family's identity. It is your legacy from the very beginning. Land was very important. The only people in the tribes of Israel who did not get to hold on to property were the Levites because they were dedicated to the temple. And that's why all the other tribes contributed to the well-being and the financial care of the Levites. It's because they didn't get to have property. Property matters. It's part of the identity, part of the history. And so when we have this jubilee, it's about restoring families, restoring relationships, letting go of old wounds, no matter how real, how vile. Nobody's saying that they weren't important or bitter, just that in the presence of God, they cannot stand. Forgive each other. Make allowances for your faults, for their faults. Live at peace. This healing of the heart. It isn't just for other people feeling like they've been released from their stuff. It's us releasing ourselves from the weight of holding on to that bitterness, that weight, that anger. We get to be healed. We get to be restored to our families, to our property, to our things that matter. More importantly, to the people that matter. See, God is always working about God's people. It's always about God's heart for God's people. It's never just stuff. It's never just creation, because at the heart of God is about his children. We matter. We are in relationship. And so to be in relationship means we need to figure out how to do it well, how to start again when it gets complicated and messy, how to let go of not getting the apology you deserve, how to let go of the things that can't be undone and get back 
to each other as sons and daughters of God, as brothers and sisters. So we make allowances. That doesn't mean we tolerate abuse or bad behavior. It doesn't mean we don't set healthy boundaries. It doesn't mean we don't have healthy relationships because the point of Jubilee is a healthy relationship. The point of Jubilee saying, I forgive these financial debts is I'm not going to let money come between us. I'm not going to allow these things of earth to tarnish the things of heaven. I'm going to put it in its proper perspective, in its proper place. But I started thinking, you know, this money thing, it gets messy and complicated and convoluted and not many people owe me money. Not many people, um, we aren't functioning, and it's okay now. I, I can almost hear my dad's voice saying, you never finished paying me for college. <laughs> I can hear him. <laughs> you never finished. You know, the in, like the famous loan every child has with their parent about getting through school. <laughs> You're never going to see that money, y'all. Just go ahead and call it a Sabbath year. <laughs> but when we start thinking about of what, what do people owe us, and what is a healthy relationship, and why, why these things of forgiveness, and what does it mean to really function well in a healthy, kingdom-minded, Christ-minded, Holy Spirit-bound-together relationship? And I started thinking about the people who owe me. They don't owe me necessarily because they hurt me. They owe me because I did them a favor. They owe me because they convinced me or I agreed to do something I didn't really want to do, and it was a pain, and I let them know every time I see them that they owe me for that. I want you to think, just in the last month, have you said to someone, okay, but you owe me, I want you to think about somebody saying to you, okay, I'm going to do this, but it's going to cost you. I'm going to need you to do fill in the blank. It's going to cost you. You're going to need to do this, and I'm going to hold on to, okay, so I will confess to you with my siblings. I would hold on to that favor, and I would think of something terrible, like it was not even like for like. It was was how I was going to get the most out of, the most mileage out of you owe me. I'm not going to tell mom and dad that you were the one who broke that window, but it's going to cost you. (laughs) I'm not going to tell so-and-so about X, Y, Z, but you are going to be forever in my debt. And anytime you do anything I don't like, I'm going to make that face and give you that look that knows that I'm holding something over your head. Sometimes it's harmless, and we kind of think of it as fun until you're the person who always walks around on eggshells. What we think is harmless and fun and really can be, like don't hear me say that we don't have fun relationships with our people. But we live in a community, in a world, in a time, in a culture where most of us struggle to ask for help. Most of us struggle to share when we have a need. When we aren't able to do something ourselves. We have learned this trauma response to existence where we just need to do it ourselves so we don't have to owe anyone. We don't ask for help. Or we swing to the far other side and we don't do anything for ourselves. (laughs) But when we are in that place of not being able to ask, unless we feel like we can repay people, I will owe you. I do it all the time. If you come fix this thing at my house, I will bake you things. <laughs> okay, but I give a very specific how I'm going to fill that I owe you. I don't let you guys hold that because I learned because I have siblings. We don't know how to function as community where there is free-flowing, give-and-take, where everyone lives into their skills and 
and assets and the things that we have that we're all doing exactly what we know to do and we live in the best possible versions of ourselves because we're trying to do everything for and by ourselves. And when we need someone else or someone else needs us, our response is, you owe me. It's another aspect of this jubilee that messes with me because I'm like, that's harmless. I'm not really asking for anybody's firstborn or crazy, but it takes a toll. I don't know how to ask for help because I don't know how to help you. What are you going to need from me in return? What if it's something I can't do? What if it's something I'm embarrassed about? And then there's just the whole thing of admitting that I can't do it, that I am myself am not sufficient. Oh, no, here's our very first week of Jubilee. It's not a sin to be imperfect. It is not a sin to not be able to do everything. We were designed to live in community and need each other. And yes, there is a certain amount of reciprocity that has to exist for us to be a healthy community, to be a healthy envisioning of the kingdom of heaven, where we are all living into the fullest gifts that we have been given, and we give them joyfully. We do it happily, because it's the truth of who we are, and we get to live into that. It's okay to need each other. It's right for us to need each other. It is right for us to call and say, I need help with my fence. I had a good friend in San Antonio, and he, um, we did ministry together. We went to seminary together. He, had two, he has two little girls who I love and adore. They are the two most wild, mischief-making little toots you ever wanted to see, um, and I loved every second of that. I helped them get into so much trouble. It was fantastic. Um, my sister's son lives far away, so I didn't get to be like that aunt, but I got to do it for John's kids. And John, he, his thing, he liked to work outside. He liked to do yard work. He liked to play in the mud in the garden and do the stuff. And we'd worked out this thing. I would babysit, and I would get to spend evenings with his sweet little girls, and we would play and have fun and destroy the house, and I would feed them brownies right before they went to bed. And John would come and take care of my yard, or he'd come and hang up Christmas lights, or he'd come and do the things that he likes to do. We weren't putting each other out. We weren't asking for crazy um, favors in return. We were just living into our relationship. It wasn't an I owe you. It was here's how I get to be Auntie Shell, and here's how he gets to be my friend. And it becomes more than just the stuff for stuff. It isn't just you hung Christmas lights, I'm going to babysit this one night. It's now we are family. And family naturally takes care of each other. We naturally step into those empty places or the places where we need to handle stuff. It's different. And what the scripture says, especially when he says, you Israelites, forgive all the debts for the Israelites who owe you. He's saying, among you, it must be different. Among your community, among us, family, it must be different. Among us who believe in Jesus Christ, who live by his grace and the mercy of the cross, it must be different. We must be different. Am I willing, and this, okay, so I'm trying to bring it all back together. I know you poor people are just like, she is all over the place today. But here's the thing. As we celebrate Jubilee, as we think about setting things loose and free, am I willing to forgive, to let go of my list of the things that people have said, done, asked me to do, that I've said, you owe me? Can I let go of those things that I have been holding on to so that I can see the kingdom of heaven come? 
Am I willing to surrender my stuff that I know and find identity in and value in and makes me feel safe and comfortable? Can I open up my hands for it to be taken so that I can receive something else, something better? See, the reason forgiveness is hard is because we are comfortable in our unforgiveness. Letting go of debts is hard because it's how we feel safe. They owe me. I can control them. Well, there's an illusion for another sermon. Can I let it go and celebrate? Not just, not just begrudgingly forgive or let go and just pretend they don't exist, but to celebrate them as family restored, as the prodigal home. So that I can see the kingdom. Is the kingdom more important than my stuff? Is the tikkun alam more important than my grievance? Is the healing of all hearts more important than the healing of my own heart? Not just more important, but do I believe that it's possible? Because there are things we've said are important, but we don't believe they're going to happen, and so we stopped working towards them. We think of them as a good idea, not as actionable behavior. (laughs) It would be great if I could forgive so-and-so, but they totally blew it. (laughs) It would be great if I would ever see that fill in the blank, but I'm never going to talk to them again. Are we willing to do, surrender, to give up, to let go, for the sake of something so much more than us, for the sake of all of us? It isn't, it isn't just about the discipline of forgiving or the act of obeying Sabbath and Jubilee. It's about the healing of all things. And that is something we have to have a heart for, that we have to desire and choose and move towards together. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we know that in the list of IOUs, you hold the master list. that there are things you have forgiven that we didn't even think were sinful. We didn't even think were a problem. I to pray that we would have a mind and a heart and a spirit that seeks for the healing of all things. And it's not every 50 years, but as believers in Jesus Christ, as disciples, as Christians, we recognize that we live in the Jubilee 24-7, every day, every month, every year. Because you have brought freedom. You have forgiven us. You have restored us. Lord God, what does it look like to partner with you to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth, to do our part in healing hearts so that the world might be healed? To know that that is within our power. It is within our empoweredness, being filled with your Holy Spirit. It is not a lofty ideal or a beautiful dream or a high ideal goal. It is our reality and identity as sons and daughters of God. Show us, God. Show us how to do it, how to start, what the first little step is. For your kingdom, for your people, for the sake of our own soul. 
It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. sins as we forgive. You taught us, Lord, to pray, but you alone can grant us grace to live the words we say. In blazing light, your cross we the truth we dimly knew What trivial debts are owed to us How great our debt to you Lord, cleanse the depths within our souls And bid resentment cease them bound to all in bonds of love, our lives will spread your peace. Our lives will spread your peace. Our lives will spread your peace. As we come into a time of prayer, I invite you to take a moment just in the stillness of your own heart. Confess before God those places where we have broken God's heart, where we have held a debt, where we have withheld forgiveness. God, you love us and you forgive us, and so your heart teaches us to forgive. Your kindness leads us to repentance. You invite us to come with confidence and strength and grace into the throne room of God to make our needs known to have conversation. To settle in and be healed by your presence. You tell us to ask. Ask for what we need. Ask for the things that are out of our reach. So we begin by lifting those in our community that need your hand. Norma and Luis. Marilyn, Jason, Don and Donna, Val, Benny Kay, Dwayne, Eloy, Ed, Judy, Gary, Dan, Loretta, that for those who are struggling with COVID, we ask that you would bring healing. Those who are sick, God, knowing that there is more happening in our community, in our world than just COVID. You bring your healing. 
you bring your comfort. For those who are grieving and suffering loss, would you fill them with your presence? Would you help them to feel your arms wrapped around them? For those who are struggling with anxiety, depression, isolation, Would you speak peace? Would they feel you wash over them as a holy and healing balm from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet? For our medical professionals, would you keep them healthy? Would you give them hearts of compassion? Would you give them wisdom and discernment? For our students and teachers, our schools, God, would you protect them in that place? Would you keep them healthy? you help them to not be anxious, to not be concerned about how classes will run or how assignments will get done or instead that they just go in peace, knowing each day will take care of itself. For those who are seeking employment, God, would you open up the exact right opportunities at the exact right time? those struggling with resources, would you open up the storehouses of heaven? Would you teach us, your children, to give all that we have so that none would have need? Do you remind us all the ways that you have blessed us? Not just in general, but in specific, God, how you have cared for us, how you have nurtured us, how you have protected us day to day, even just in this week. Do you give us eyes to see you, hearts that want to seek you? I invite you to share your prayer requests so that we might pray and share each other's joys and burdens. Ask that you use the mentee link that is up on the screen. Again, so that we can connect our in-person community and our online community. If you cannot access the link, then I invite you to call out your prayers out loud that we might pray together. For the Gonzalez family, Lord, hear our prayers. For Jose Garcia to recover from COVID and his wife, Mary Jackie, hear our prayers. Keep everyone warm during these cold days. Lord, hear our prayers. For Edith Hernandez and her children, Lord, hear our prayers. For the Rodriguez family, my brother Eddie and my mom, Lord, hear our prayers. (laughs) 
Lord God, for the things that we don't know how to give voice to, that are too personal or too raw, we just invite you in. We ask you to search our heart and our spirit, reach into those deep places and speak your truth. We trust you and we offer them to you freely. Lord God, we love you and we bless you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. And now we pray together as Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the time in our worship where we honor and worship God with our gifts and our tithes and our offerings, where we bring forward those slips of paper and how God has blessed us this week as a sacrifice of praise. I invite you to come. Please stand and join me in singing the, the doxology. Yeah. 
God, we bring you our first and our best of our time, our talent, our giving, our service, our witness and testimony. Take these gifts, bless them, multiply them, do with them infinitely more than we could dream or imagine for the good of your kingdom and the glory of your name. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord turn his face to you and give you favor. The Lord lift his face to you and give you his shalom, his peace. Amen. <laughs>